Disclaimer! I am not sponsored by nor am I affiliated with any of the companies mentioned in this video. All opinions are presented are mine and mine alone. They do not represent anyone besides myself. Your opinions may differ. That's okay. Try this stuff out for yourself in order to find out if it works for you. Hi everyone, it's me, Krista. Welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. If not, welcome to the very first time to my little art corner here on YouTube. Today, we are going to be opening up the June 2019 regular Art Snacks box. I am not doing the premium boxes yet because I don't quite feel like spending $50 a month for art supplies that I may or may not like. If you've gotten their premium boxes, or even if you haven't, let me know how you feel about them adding that to their line in the comment section down below. We should probably be getting into opening this box right about now. Like every month, we get our little menu that tells us exactly what's coming in this month's box. Our snack for the month is Sour Patch Kids. I love those commercials. First, they're sweet, and then they're sour. They're pretty funny. I unfortunately will not be able to eat this one because it is raspberry, and I am allergic to them. Someone else has to have this. So this box is going to feature some familiar items for me. I feel like I've gotten a lot of these in previous things. The first item is the Marabu Graphics Aqua Pens, and they retail for $5.98. I'm assuming as a set because it says together. What's your palette this month with two Marabu Graphics Aqua Pens? These felt tip watercolor pens are double ended, featuring a fine contour tip and a larger brush tip. The water-based pigment ink delivers brilliant color and can be fanned out with a wet brush. Warning, be sure to never dip these pens directly into water. I wonder what that does. Probably something bad if they tell you not to do it. Hmm. I got yellow and black. Let me know in that comment section down below what colors you got. The one tip of this is a brush tip. I'm just going to show you the black one. And if I remember correctly, it's pretty flexible. Works pretty much like any other brush tip marker on the market. And there are quite a few of them out there now. And then the other tip is just a little baby nib. Not quite as fine as I would typically like for a fine liner, but it will work for most stuff. Next, we have the Pentel Arts Micro Brush Sign Pen, and it's $4.99, usually in retail, and this is a new product. Depending on how you hold it, the Pentel Arts Micro Brush Sign Pen can give you the most delicate of fine lines, or it can lay down a bold line. The mark's thickness depends on the pen's angle, quickness of stroke, and paper texture. You'll also be impressed with its bright and intense water-based ink. I got one of these in the special release fashion sketch box in green. So, so far we are two for two for stuff I've gotten in previous boxes, because I know I got the Marabu Graphics Aqua Pens in a previous one, but I can't remember if it was Sketchbox or Art Snacks. This one I definitely got in a Sketchbox in a really pretty emerald green. This time I have orange. So at least I'm not getting the same color in that. With the Marabu Graphics Aqua Pens, I'm pretty sure I already have a black, but you can't really have too many black markers, right? And this is the tip of that marker. As you can see, it is really fine and it comes to a nice point. You can get some really nice, delicate, thin lines with this. Next we have a Plum Chester PO5 mechanical pencil and it is $17.99 retail. And this is a new product and is an Art Snacks exclusive. The best ideas start with a sturdy, reliable pencil. That's where the Plum Chester PO5 mechanical pencil comes in. Its sleek metal body is not only stylish, but also delivers comfort and control. Featuring a 0.5 size lead, a rigid grip, and a built-in eraser under the cap, it is the ultimate drawing tool. We have stocked your new pencil with 2B lead to prevent breakage, but you can refill it with whatever grade you prefer. I've said this before, I feel really uncomfortable with spending like more than $2 on a mechanical pencil, especially because you do have to refill it with lead. I'm just weird about it, <laughs> but it does feel nice and sturdy. It's definitely a metal. It feels like it's a really good quality, so I will give it that. And the final item in this month's box is the Pentel Arts Hybrid Technica Gel Pen. 
and it is $2.99 resale. I also got this in a previous box. I think it was the January sketch box. And if I remember correctly, I didn't like it any more than any other gel pen I've ever used, but who knows? We'll try it again. We'll see. We'll see. And this is a staff favorite. Get down to details with the Pentel Arts Hybrid Technica gel pen. The pen is pretty special. It features a unique tungsten carbide roller ball tip that ensures a consistent line from the first to last mark. The pigment ink is archival and water resistant and won't dry out if left uncapped during use. So at least it's archival in quality. And like I said, we will try it again. It doesn't hurt to try stuff again. So the total for all of the items that came in this month's box, if we we're going by original retail price, would be $31.95. So you would be saving about $5 if we are not including shipping with the Art Snacks box. Now that we've kind of talked about everything that's in here, let's get into the actual project. All right. For this drawing, I decided to draw a blackbird that has a little bit of red and yellow on the wing. In this case, I'm using orange because I don't have red. The photo I chose is called Red Winged Blackbird. It's by Don Craig and it is from pmp-art.com. And that is my reference photo for this particular marker drawing. I wanted to try to draw something that I don't normally do, yet again I am attempting to broaden my horizons as an artist just the tiniest bit, and I honestly don't remember the last time I did a full on bird drawing. Typically if I've drawn a bird it's just been like a little doodle in a sketchbook without shading or anything. I'm obviously doing the sketch with that Plum Chester mechanical pencil that came in here. It is really heavy, the casing is, which I did say before. The lead broke a lot, especially when I was trying to use it for shading on top of the black markers later. I kind of feel like if you're going to be spending $18 for a mechanical pencil, the lead should be slightly more durable, or at least the way it's held should be slightly more durable. For the background, I started with the Marabu Aqua Pen graphics marker in yellow. That is my original layer, and I made sure not to put any other markers down before that yellow, because I've noticed in general yellow markers, or just lighter markers in general, very easily pick up other things around them. I wanted this pigment to be as pure as possible at this point. And then after I finish filling in the yellow background and putting in that little tiny yellow bit on the wing, I go over the background with lines of that orange brush sign pen by Pentel. The Marabu Aqua Pen graphics markers work really well. They layer fairly well. They played with everything else in here very nicely. It is pretty opaque and that yellow is actually quite bright. I was surprised by how pigmented and bright it was. I was expecting it to be a paler yellow. So I was kind of excited that I happened to be on the more vibrant side. Also, it laid down in a non-streaky way. It laid down pretty flat, which is pretty awesome. I will say these markers are nice. I am happy to have the yellow added to my collection. And in case you're wondering what kind of paper I'm using, I'm using a bristle board from the Strathmore 300 series. It's a little bit of a thicker paper, it's also a very smooth paper, and it works pretty well with marker application. It's one of my favorite papers to use for marker work. The end goal for this drawing was for it to be on the edge of realism and illustration. I wanted it to look slightly realistic, but also just feel really bright and colorful and fun. I also wanted certain parts of it to be really loose and expressive, like that background, and tighten up some of the detail work in places like around the eyes and some of those feathers. I also made the decision to use the Marabu black marker for the darkest parts of this blackbird, 
and then use the mechanical pencil for some shading. I wanted to try to integrate those as well as humanly possible, and I think it was a pretty good technique. It turned out a lot better than I thought it would. And this is slightly off topic. I do want to apologize for any noise you might hear in the background. I do have a fan on today because it is pretty hot outside. It's almost 10 p.m. at night and it is still about 80 degrees out. I want to try to keep cool and comfy. The black Marabu Aqua Pen Graphics Marker thing. It works just as well as the yellow one. It is very opaque. It lays down pretty smooth. There's no streakiness. And like I said, it plays pretty well with the pencil. And for this drawing, I'm using a lot of smaller strokes because it is a small drawing. The space I am using on this piece of paper is only four by six. So it's pretty tiny. I've been trying to work on getting more detail work in my pieces because I used to have a tendency to kind of stop it way before it should have felt finished, and in some ways I probably still do, because I kind of have an idea and I want to get it out ASAP, and sometimes I don't think about the best ways to accomplish that. I'm starting to realize that about myself though, and therefore working on it and trying to take a longer amount of time on each piece I work on. For quite a lot of this drawing, for the deep black spots, I am using the brush tip. The exception is right here where I'm using the smaller tip to kind of trace around the edges and give a slight suggestion of some texture on the outline of this birdie. I am pretty happy with how that eye turned out and how some of the area around it turned out as well. I'm sure there are a lot of areas for improvement. I can already tell that I got some of the proportions wrong and some other stuff that goes a little bit wrong compared to the photo later. But that is the point of creating. You want to look at every single piece, see what you feel like you accomplished and possibly what you did good on, and then think about the areas that you have some room for improvement. It's not that anything is bad, it just means it can be improved. And that is always a great way to look at it. And an advantage of using a smaller section of the paper for the main part of the drawing is you can use the rest of it to either clean off markers or to do like test swatches. That way you can kind of see what's going on a little bit better and maybe some ways you can play with what you got. Gives you a better idea of what's going on. Being able to clean off these markers if they touch something darker, especially that yellow one, very, very helpful. I realized at this point in the drawing that there were some little under tufts of feathers I missed. So I went over with the pencil and then the brush tip part of that marabou in black. It did cover up the underneath colors really well. Once again, that marker is very opaque and it did not lift up any of the marker that was underneath it. Because I know occasionally, depending on the marker, that is something you can run into. This did not appear to do that. A lot of this drawing is me going between the mechanical pencil and using different amounts of pressure on that to get various shades of gray and using the black marabou marker. I do end up using the black gel pen a little bit later and that Pentel Arts Hybrid Technica. I mostly use it on the outline of the bird to add some extra little tiny tiny little textures and insinuations of tufts of feathers to show that they're little individual feathers that kind of go whatever way they feel like at that moment. The conclusion I can draw from this box at like my feelings about it is that especially compared to last month because I had so much fun with last month's box it was something unique and exciting and a lot of it was stuff I hadn't really played with before this is stuff that I've gotten in previous Art Snacks boxes. This is stuff I've even gotten in previous sketch boxes as well. And a lot of it's not exactly stuff that wowed me a lot the first time around. And it's not really wowing me a lot this time around. I feel like Art Snacks has put out this box before 
and maybe changed out some of the brands a little bit. And not just before, like they've done this box multiple times before. Literally everything that came in this box, with the exception of the mechanical pencil, is stuff I already have. And a lot of it's stuff that I have better versions of. The only thing that I really, really enjoy out of this is that orange marker. And it's just because it is a small, fine-tipped colored marker, and I don't have a lot of those. And that is the uh, Pentel Brush Sign Pen. And the unique item we have is by Plumchester, which, if I'm not mistaken, is Art Snacks. It's their brand. So we have an $18 pencil in here that is something that they made. And I still just can't get over the fact that there's an $18 pencil in here. I can't justify it. I'll use it because it came in this box, but it's not something that I think I would buy on its own or replace. I just think I had bad luck with what came in this month's box because of stuff that I've previously gotten from other boxes and a lot of it's stuff that was fairly recent from those other boxes within the past month or so. But on a positive note, all the stuff that was curated in this box plays really well together, so there is that. And I did really enjoy drawing this bird, and I like the final result. So let's try to end this video on that positive note. I like the result of what I did, and the stuff worked well together. If you liked this video, please hit that like button. If you have any comments, questions, feelings, or concerns, or if you got this box, or you've used any of the products in here, let me know in that comment section down below. If you liked this box, let me know. If you hated this box, let me know. Also, let me know what you made with it. I'm really interested to hear what everybody did. If you want to see more videos like this, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. I do art snacks videos at least once a month, and I do sketchbox videos at least once a month. I post every Friday, and those other two weeks that I do not do the unboxings, I play around with some other stuff. It's usually just kind of whatever I feel like making at that period of time. Thank you so much for taking this moment out of your day or night to watch this video and listen to me ramble about art supplies. I greatly appreciate it. I also appreciate the fact that we hit over 100 subscribers here. Thank you so much for everyone who has subscribed. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. It's awesome. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day or night. Bye!